Welcome to this video on how to use arrays in Java. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to look at how you declare an array and what you can do with it once you've got it. Let's start at the beginning. There are three ways in which you can create an array. An array is just a list, like a list of names or a list of ages or a list of J buttons or a list of anything you like. Arrays are the programmer's friend. Get to know them, get to know them well, and they're really useful. So let's start here. We can start by declaring a variable type and a variable name. In this case, I've created a variable called friend, and I know it's an array because after the variable type, which is string, I've got these square brackets. A pair of square brackets means this is going to be an array. So it's going to be a list of friends. And the easy way to create a list is if you know all the values to start with, you put them in curly brackets, and then each one is either in quotation marks if it's a string or just the number if it's numbers, separated by commas. In this case, I've only got three friends. Tony, Lance and Helen. So I can do that. Alternatively, I can say something like int, angle bracket, angle bracket. That means I've got an array of integers. And I'm going to call this list age. And this list is going to be a new integer list of three items. So I've got a list of three ages here. Now I can set the first age to 23. Notice that the first age starts at 0. That's because we've used 0 of them so far. So this is the first one. So the size of an array is one less than the highest number in the array. So I have an array of size 3. The highest number is 2 because it goes from naught. So I can set each of the ages 0, 1 and 2 to any numbers I like, in this case 23, 37 and 43. And yes, you're quite right, I could have done exactly what I did in the lines above. I could have created the curly brackets with the numbers in, but I wanted to show you that you could do the job just as easily by declaring them specifically. The final way to do something in arrays is to say I'm going to use a loop. So here I've got a boolean array and again I know it's an array because of the square brackets. The list is called in today. So this says whether they're in the office or not and it's a new boolean of size 3. So now I could set all of the booleans to be true. I create a loop so int i equals 0 that's my initialization. Whilst i is less than the length of the array dot length tells you how many items there are in the list. And then when I've completed what's in the loop I want to add one to i. In this case I'm setting in today i, so i starts off at 0 and goes up to 2, I'm setting in today i to be true. So everybody's in. Now I can output the data. So again I've got a loop. Here I'm saying because I know the size of the loop I could say less than 3, but a better way of doing it would be to say array name dot length. But I wanted to show you that you could do it that way. So I'm going to go around this loop and I'm going to say if the person I is in today I'm going to print out the friend's name who is of a particular age is in today. But if it's not in today so for example if they were out I would do the else the name of the friend 
who is, and of a particular age, is not in. Now you and I know that everybody is in because we set that to true. But my program would take care of the case where that isn't so. Let me show you what the program looks like when it's running. Here we have Tony who is 23 is in today. Lance who is 37 is in today. Helen who is 43 is in today. All I'm doing is using the bits of information that I put into the list. We declare a variable type and give the list a name, give the array a name, and then we have to put things in the array. We can put in strings, we can put in numbers, we can put in booleans, we could have it whatever we wanted. We can have lists of buttons if we want. We can then use that array, or those arrays in this case, within a loop to make our program much shorter and much easier to understand. 